Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of the Holistic Healing Network. I am your host, Leah Petrucci. I am a licensed mental health counselor and a holistic health and lifestyle coach. And today I have a special guest, my friend and colleague, Sarah Zimmerman, licensed clinical social worker. And today we're going to uh, do a bit of a double interview. We're going to take turns and ask each other uh, some questions to, to help the audience get to know a little bit more about the services that we provide in the mental health field. And since it's coming up on the holidays, the holidays are here, we will be talking a little bit more about um, how people can seek out mental health and coaching services for the holidays. So let me take a moment and welcome my guest, Sarah Zimmerman. So nice to have you today, Sarah. So nice to be here, Leah. Thank you. Wonderful. So we have a set of questions for our viewers that we're going to take turns asking. So um, let's just get right into it, shall we? Yes. All right. So the first question that I have, and we're going to put these up on the screen. So the first question I have for Sarah is, what are your areas of specialization? Well, I like to work in a few different areas, um, one of which is complex PTSD. And with that, uh, that would also include sexual trauma, dissociation, and attachment disruptions. And some of my work experience has been within foster care in Baltimore City, where I really was able to experience um, a lot of situations involving attachment, repair, and ruptures. And I also worked in the sexual assault unit on Long Island in New York. And I had a lot of experience working with dissociation and survivors of childhood sexual abuse. And it was also during that time I was trained in EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And Dr. Shapiro did my level two training, which was really exciting in New York. Um, so she is yeah. the one who developed it. And I also worked at Long Island DBT. And that was a great experience, just learning dialectical behavior therapy skills which I really think benefit everyone, but that was originally created to help alleviate symptoms of borderline personality disorder. So mm. these are areas I'm very passionate and working in and how these work experiences really have shaped even more of my passion in the field and, and these particular, working with these particular clients. Yes. Could you tell give a little bit more detail about dbt and and emdr and kind of explained for our our layman's terms for people out there what what that involves sure well i'll start with emdr which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing it's a mind body approach where we work with typically traumatic memories so there's a focus on the image negative thoughts body sensations, and through the use of bilateral stimulation, which can be as simple as eye movements from side to side, or tapping, or uh, vibrations, or, or listening to tones, it's an opportunity to shift this stuck traumatic material into a way that feels processed and less intense. Mm. So it's noticing yes. fewer negative thoughts, fewer unpleasant sensations in the body, more emotional regulation. Yes. Yeah, that that was very, very clear way to describe it. Well, tell us a little bit about DBT and, and what that, uh, remind us again what that stands for and what all that involves. So DBT is Dialectical Behavior Therapy, and that was created by Marsha Linehan. And it's a very skills-based approach. Um, typically in a DBT program, there is group, there are family sessions and individual sessions. In my practice, I'm just doing the individual sessions to learn the skills modules. And those are working with crisis survival skills, 
learning emotional regulation skills, um, interpersonal effectiveness, which is really about communicating and boundaries, right. and skills of mindfulness, which are such a great building block for really any type of intervention, just being able to be present and aware in the moment and to have acceptance yeah. of the moment. Right, which is challenging to do. And it really does help to have someone to guide you through that process. Yes, and to practice and to mm -hmm. become a bit of, more of a habit and comfort with yes. it. Right, incorporate it into your regular routine, yes. Those are the main ones I use. And I also work with cognitive behavior theory, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy for anyone who feels that working with thoughts is a little bit more um, comfortable for them, or maybe they're used to that from previous therapy. I also use some somatic exercises because that is such a piece of EMDR. And I'm always very strengths based. And, and somatic, we know what that is, but can you remind yeah. the audience what that, what that is? Yes. Somatic is having awareness of what's going on in your body. So the felt mm -hmm. sense that often accompanies emotions, but sometimes um, there, there's a presence of body sensations where it's not clear to someone what the thought is associated with that or what triggered that or what emotion um, coincides with that. So it's really creating more awareness around that and reducing or releasing some of that physical discomfort. And, uh, you know, I was intrigued to find out that one of your areas of specialization is also working with dissociative identity disorder or just dissociation in general. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what that means? Sure. Um, dissociation has always been something that was very intriguing to me. And I always felt great compassion for really addressing the emotional and childlike part that exists for really, if we think about it, all of us have different parts. We're just typically consciously aware of our different parts. But an example of that is just even thinking about how we behave differently at work um, compared to how we might in our family of origin or with our friends. And these are really different ego states. So I don't do too much work um, with DID any longer because I, I do a lot of telehealth work and I, I like to honor right. that type of work in person. Um, yes. But working with dissociation it really is helping people create a safe space to um, acknowledge some of the unmet needs from those earlier emotional parts, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. childlike part, and connecting use of adult self, um, which we all have, to use our strengths to really meet our own needs. So to mm -hmm. kind of bridge that gap and meet some of those developmental needs and try to, um, you know, create some change around identifying the need, meeting the need, and then kind of going forward, feeling fulfilled once those mm -hmm. needs are met. And right. What that looks like when there isn't the same emphasis placed on trying to get the need met. It really opens up opportunities then to have attention and interest and relief to pursue so many other things. Mm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. And and what types of clients do you see? Adults? Any yeah. particular age? Okay. I work with 18 up to about 18. 75. Right. Okay. Okay. And in the state of Florida and New York, correct? And Maryland and Virginia. And Maryland and Virginia. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. That's a um, nice, broad, you know, uh, I know we're coming up on expanding our uh, certain states that we may be able to serve when that bill gets worked out, that compact yeah. counseling compact bill, I think that it's called, we'll be able to serve more states. But for now, we are limited to practice where our license is. And that's... Um, 
very nice that you are licensed in more than one state. So that's very helpful. And I've lived in all of those states. So although yes. I might not know exactly what it's like currently, I do have at least some, you know, knowledge and experience in having lived in all those states. All right. So the next question that we have for you is, does therapy require you to re-experience your trauma memories in order to get better? I know this is a very popular question. Basically, I want to encourage anyone who has some concerns or reservations about therapy and that it might be re-traumatizing and re-victimizing, that it is possible to have success in therapy and to get help for trauma. If you have a, a therapist who's trauma-informed um, or certified in trauma and will be respectful of the fact that safety and stabiliza stabilization have to be the priority of this work. So what that looks like is basically in processing memories that it's respectful of the client's safety in having concern or understanding of their window of tolerance and what they're willing to work on, what they feel like they're able to work on without it being completely dysregulating. And that includes being uncomfortable, feeling unsafe. Um, we really want to emphasize that that is possible to do. It is a bit of a balancing act of working in the past, as well as working on how the past is impacting the present and being very grounded in the present. You know, right. that can include anything from the actual therapy session to everything going on in the client's present life. And it's kind mm -hmm. of like sitting on a fence with having a leg on, on either side or on both sides. And you mm -hmm. can see both sides, but you want to maintain that balance so that you're not falling. And that's a really good analogy. Yes. Because getting too um, stuck in the past and reliving can feel very dangerous for clients right. and feel, and feel very yes. vulnerable. So right. we do want to do that in a way that's very delicate. And it's also kind of a slower pace. So many clients um, who need things to be slowed down and they need to feel like they have control and choice in the session. I absolutely encourage that because you can still be doing a tremendous amount of processing with kind of like letting the air out of a balloon. It doesn't have to be abrupt. You can absolutely have the same type of release and progress while you're doing a lot of the strengthening work, while you're doing a very titrated type of release. So mm -hmm. that is very much how I work in any intervention I'm using. Like we talked about EMDR before, DBT, CBT. Um, the pacing is extremely important to me and that my client feels safe and understood and that therapy is not re-victimizing the person. Yes, yes. I, I know that's a question that I get a lot is when we do trauma work, does that mean we have to go back and completely relive this traumatic experience and they worry that they're going to get stuck in the past and never, or, or they may worry that they'll start crying or have this release of emotion and never be able to stop that flood of emotion. So um, thank you for clarifying, clarifying that. For yes, our audience. You, said that, you said that so well, because it takes so much courage to start therapy. I certainly don't want someone to feel that it is going to be a terrifying process. It's, a, it's right. difficult work, but we want to support that as much as possible. Exactly. And, you know, as therapists, we're constantly in tune with our clients, you know, especially when we can see them, you know, and even sometimes when I have just a phone session, I can tune into their voice and mm -hmm. their nonverbal communication and, and tell when they're uncomfortable, uh, you know, and, and we're constantly tweaking uh, their experience based on, you know, how their nervous system is responding to the therapy. So that's an important piece of trauma work as well as being in tune with our clients and knowing when they're starting to get uncomfortable and being able to pace that. Yes, 
yeah. at a comfortable level. Yeah. And as we know, most evidence seems to point to the therapeutic relationship probably being the most important factor in trauma yes. recovery, you know. Absolutely. But it's very important. Number number one is to have that therapeutic alliance and to feel comfortable with your therapist. Yes, absolutely. All right. Do you have any other thoughts on that? Or would you like to move on to the next question? We can move on. Thank you. All right. So since we are in the holidays now, they are here. What are some services that can help clients through the holidays? Well, I would say for everyone, um, there is the benefit of being in therapy during the holidays for stress reduction. And, you know, there's a lot of spending and eating and shopping and time management concerns over the holidays and finding time to prioritize self-care and be able to talk about what you need to um, and not have to distract from that throughout the holidays or, you know, minimize what someone's experiencing is so important. And for clients who are experiencing anxiety, um, whether it's social anxiety or generalized anxiety, um, as well as depression and trauma, the holidays can be a time of fear and dread. Um, people can feel like they're being judged. There's a lot of pressure to celebrate the holidays in a very traditional way, typically. And right. that doesn't always feel comfortable for people to be doing that, whether it's with coworkers or families, um, you know, especially if families have been a source of a lot of pain and trauma for the clients. So I really just want to acknowledge that it is a time where everyone can really benefit from therapy and using mindfulness and self-compassion and also boundary setting around the idea of how you want to define your holiday and who and what and how you want to spend your money and your time and your energy and to really validate that you have the right to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. to say no to certain things and to choose what feels good for you. And if therapy can help with that, I'd be happy to support that process. Yeah, it, it's it's so important, you know, is you know as as a therapist that typically we don't see as many clients over the holidays because of the stress of the holidays or travel they're traveling or they're having family visiting. And so there's a lot of cancellations and and oftentimes I will then have an influx of, of clients calling the first week of January and they're in crisis mm -hmm. because they have not been able to maintain their counseling sessions over the holidays. And now they're just so um, overloaded with, with stress. And so we have to do a lot of damage control. And so it's so important. I, I try to encourage my clients to keep their sessions over the holidays if possible so we can maintain you know, that accountability for self-care. Um, but yeah, you're right. It is, it is so Im important and, um, there's, there's lots that, that therapy can do to, to help a client just to process what's going on maybe with family or with maybe grief, you know, if they've mm -hmm. lost a loved one, you know, in, in the past, and this is their, uh, either first time without that loved one or, or the 20th time. And it's still difficult, you know? Lots of lots of things that, that we can do to support our clients through the holidays. Wonderful. All right. Any other thoughts on that one before we, we move on? I was just going to say I'm so glad that we're discussing this today because I know that the holidays can be such a happy time. But I think the reality for so many people is that it is a, a time of mixed emotions. It is a time that's you know, with a lot of bittersweet types of feelings. So just to even be able to acknowledge that it's okay to feel that way. And it's okay that if yes. that's the reality for our clients of, of having different feelings about it, that's okay. Right. 
Yes. I, I think it brings up feelings for just about every person <laughs> yeah. in some shape or form, mm -hmm. you know, whether, whether those are good feelings or not so good feelings, you know, it definitely brings up emo several different emotions. So what message would you like to share with our viewers? What, if there's any kind of final tips or message you would like to share with our audience? Yes, thank you. I would like to encourage everyone, as I had said before, to consider going to therapy, to be open to the idea of trying the experience finding a therapist who they feel is warm and welcoming. Um, it's really an opportunity to release some of the hold and impact of past trauma and to, you know, truly live in the present and dream of your future and to think about moving forward in a way where you're believing in your own worth even if no one has validated that for you before, therapy is that opportunity to do that and to create healthier boundaries in your relationships mm -hmm. and to develop coping strategies for whatever lies ahead in your life mm -hmm. and to feel yes. comfortable with using them. Yes. So important is to have that, those cope, good coping skills. We, we need them on a daily basis, you know. I, I, I use mine daily <laughs> throughout the day, <laughs> many different types of things that I bring out of my, I call it my emotional toolbox, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so important. And, mm -hmm. um, therapy, and so I, I think is so important. Yeah. And I think it's so important too, that we're really normalizing. Yes, we all get stressed out. We all need coping strategies. We all have yeah. different feelings about the holidays and different memories. And, you know, we are coming from a place of saying we completely understand that and want to be so supportive of just having space to express that and to also learn um, different ways to handle things as well and to explore those options. Right. It doesn't have to be just just one thing, you know, it can be multiple things and we tailor it towards our client's personality or towards their level of willingness. You know, if they're maybe not willing to do this coping skill, maybe they're willing to do this one, you know, and it's different for each person. It's very tailored towards each individual. Yeah. All right. Any any other thoughts on that one? I agree with you 100 percent. And and certainly um, in considering different interventions and as we are required to write treatment plans, I always want to incorporate what a client has previously tried, what has worked, what hasn't, what they're interested in trying. For the first time, um, you know, certainly everyone comes with strengths, even if they feel that they don't have strengths, everyone has some strengths. So really working with that and finding the best fit with interventions and different strategies to try. Right. Yes. And that's, that's an important, you know, thing to remember because there's so many different types of therapy and just, just like when you go to a medical doctor, <clears throat> there are different specializations. There are exactly the same with therapy, you know, no two therapists do the exact same thing. You know, you and I might do CBT. We might have that in common where we do cognitive behavioral therapy, but as we've talked, we both have different areas of specialization. And that's another reason we wanted to do this podcast so we could illuminate, you know, <clears throat> the different services that you offer and how they may overlap, but also maybe some may overlap, but also may be completely different. And, and how it's important to seek out a therapist that is skilled in a type of therapy that fits with that client's goals and fits with their personality and, of course, fits with their current issues and their current concerns. You know, so... Um, definitely important for, for our viewers to know that it's not just a one size fits all. Not every therapist is the same. 
And um, I have clients that may see me, but may also do EMDR with a different therapist. And I absolutely encourage that because I don't offer EMDR. And so I like to, um, you know, let my clients know, well, this is this is a gap where I, I can't help you with this issue. But I have people that I that I know that that I feel comfortable with referring you to, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's so important for them to, to have all of their needs addressed. Yes. And I may have a client yeah. in therapy who wants to work on something very specific with coaching or, you know, something, an area where you are specializing and exactly that is the right fit we're talking about, that there can be a number of different tools that really help a client to um, accomplish what they're looking to do with their their needs and interests. All right. Well, the, the final question that we have for you is how can people find your services? If they want to work with you, how can they get in touch with you? Well, I can post my website, but it is um, that right now. Yeah, simply my name, Sarah Elaine Zimmerman, lcsw.com. Um, they can also call me at 561-508-8809. Um, you can also uh, find me through Simple Practice, and that's another way to get to my client portal. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So, yeah, absolutely encourage um, anyone who is listening that uh, really resonated with the services that Sarah provides. Will you um, remind us again what states you're licensed in? Florida, New York, Maryland, Maryland, New York. And Virginia. Yes. Right. Wonderful. And that may change in the future when this counseling bill gets passed, but I am actually not update up to date on where they're at with that process. So for now, those are the states where you can serve if, if someone live is a resident of that state. Yes. Yes. And telehealth awesome. is available as well. Thank you, Leah. Yes. And you do telehealth. Yes. That's a really important piece oh, to uh, to remind people is, is you do a mix, right, of both in person and telehealth. Okay, wonderful. Well, all right. Any uh, any final thoughts before we switch? I thank you for the opportunity to do this. Absolutely. To have Absolutely. this discussion, I think it's it's important for the viewers to to see and to hear and to just have you know exposure if people haven't previously. Um, had therapy or coaching to just kind of know a little bit more about what we do. Yes, absolutely. Well, and I thank you for taking the time to share a little bit more about the services that, that you provide. Okay. So at this time, we're going to, we're going to switch, we're going to switch hands now. And Sarah is going to interview me and ask most of the same questions. Um, This first question is a little bit different, so I'm going to put them on the screen. And we're going to get going. Okay. Okay. Leah, could you tell us how you got into this type of work? Yes. So um, I am a licensed mental health counselor, and I'll share a little bit about how I came, how that came about first. And then I'll share a little bit about how I became a coach. So the first license that that I uh, earned was as a licensed mental health counselor. And how that came about was, um, as most therapists will tell you, they had some kind of trauma in their childhood, and that's really what caused them to want to go into the field of psychology and understand human behavior. And of course, that was absolutely my story. Uh, as a child, as a teenager, actually, I was 15 years old, and I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type of lymphatic cancer, and um, went through chemotherapy for about a year. And that, of course, as you can imagine, really shaped my life as a teenager and my family going through that um we went through a lot of trauma and we, we lived in the hospital most of that time. I had to drop out of school temporarily to get well. And um, not only, not even a year passed after I was declared in remission that my mom uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. So we had a double 
whammy of cancer in our family. And so that was definitely something that shaped me wanting to understand more about trauma. Um, it's, it's kind of ironic, though, that I did end up going into um, mental health counseling because when I was going through chemo, the, the hospital staff set me, you know, set me up to have therapeutic services and to do some somatic work, deep breathing. And, and of course, as an angry teenager who was sick and um, very disgruntled, I thought that was a bunch of hokey, <laughs> you know, uh, I poo pooed that stuff back then. But when I became of age and, and I became more open minded to understand about the body and um, how the body works, and I was very fascinated with that as well. And that's what led me to study to become a therapist. And then later on, as, as my health journey continued, I, you know, I was declared in remission from my cancer, but um, my health journey didn't stop there. I, in my 20s, I started having chronic migraines. Then later on in my 30s, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which to some doctors is an autoimmune disorder. I absolutely think it's an autoimmune disorder. Chronic pain, you know, joint, joint pain, muscle uh, symptoms, and um, a lot of digestive issues. And I struggled with um, also chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, and, um, and then just Last year, uh, my family and I, we dealt with mold, uh, mold in our home. And I realized uh, that I was very sensitive to this, this mold in our home. And uh, so having a lot of different health journeys is what caused me to want to go into health coaching. So I started my own practice as a licensed mental health counselor. And then about a year later, I, I felt that something was missing and um, I looked into coaching. I didn't want to become a nurse like like my mom and my sister, <laughs> two uh, nurses in the family. I didn't really want to go that route. Um, but I was I'm just really fascinated with health coaching because I had to learn myself how to get well and how to prioritize my self care. And at one point, I was really terrible at that. And I ate horrible food and I slept horrible hours and uh, I was just, you know, using chemicals that weren't good for my body. And just I was surrounding myself with toxic people and toxic relationships. And that's uh, another thing I'll get into in, in a future question about an area of specialization. But but um, but that's mainly why I. Um, got into this type of work was my own health related trauma and just wanting to help people that really struggle with their own health. And so that's one of my main niche. And thank you for sharing your story with us. Oh, you're welcome. You've gone through. Yes. What are your areas of specialization? Yeah. So, uh, so health and wellness, um, my, my, coaching title, as I call, I chose to call myself is a holistic health and lifestyle coach. So what that means is I enjoy helping people make lifestyle changes. I enjoy helping people prioritize their self-care as far as um, eating healthy food, breathing clean air, drinking clean water, getting a good night's sleep, um, and, and even as far as relationships goes, that's another area of specialization that I help people with. As both a counselor and mental health counselor and a coach, I help people break patterns of choosing toxic relationships. And uh, a little bit of my backstory on that is um, I realized that I had a pattern of choosing unhealthy people to as friends unhealthy um, people as romantic partners and even unhealthy workplaces in the past. And I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to surround myself with toxic people. So um, not only did I take the time I needed to 
get well in that re- aspect, I also realized that I had a passion for helping specifically women with this issue. I do also help men um, get out of toxic relationships or or help them to break that pattern of not choosing toxic relationships. But mostly my niche are, are women, adults, um, 25 and up, and um, who have gotten out, they're already out of the toxic relationship. I, I used to work with women who are still in the toxic relationship, but it really was very traumatic for me because I have a past of unhealthy relationships, specifically with narcissistic type partners. And um, it was it just became too much of a trauma for me to work with clients who are still in the relationship especially if they kept going back. It was just really hard. And I had to um, I had to really set that boundary for my own self-care since that is a priority for me is to practice you know good self-care. So I enjoy helping people, specifically women um, who are no longer in an, an unhealthy relationship to first of all embrace their singlehood and you know understand that, the first relationship, the most important relationship is the one with yourself and to learn how to practice that self-care and learn how to identify unhealthy behaviors, learn how to identify narcissistic traits in people uh, and learn how to set those boundaries. And, um, and so those are my two main niches, I would say, is helping, uh, helping women break that pattern of, you know, choosing themselves and and practice better self-care in their relationships and also uh, practicing better self-care in their health and wellness. And specifically in that area, I like to help women who have autoimmune disorders, have chronic migraines, because that's also something that I have struggled with for 20 plus years, Um, but it is uh, much better than it it was at, at one point. I came very close to having to hang up my hat as a therapist and um, because of these debilitating migraines, but I was so, um, I was so adamant to not let that happen because of all the hard work that I had done and how far I had come to get my license. It actually took me five years to get licensed because of health issues and health challenges and obstacles. And uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to let that, all that hard work go to waste. So uh, I'm I'm really glad that I kind of doubled down and found holistic ways. And that's another niche is holistic is a holistic approach. And what that means is, you know, looking at the whole person, the mind, the body, the spirit, and and your relationships, and to get a whole picture of, um, you know, not just not just one thing. It's it, it's an integrative approach. So I like to incorporate all of those things, specifically the mind body connection. And um, so that those are those are basically my niches. I mean, those aren't the only um, types of clients that I serve. Of course, you know, a lot I do a lot of trauma work, a lot of work with anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, um, codependency. And um, I do I love to do uh, work with adult children, which that's a term that refers to uh, people who are adults now, but when they were children, they grew up in a dysfunctional family system. And I mean, really, who didn't, you know, no, no family is perfect. No family is without fault and without mistakes. And, um, you know, so I, I do enjoy helping people take a look at, at, past patterns, but not to the point where we get stuck there. I, I like to use the, the analogy of looking in a rear view mirror. You, you look in the rear view mirror very briefly to kind of get your bearings to see where you're at and to identify past patterns. And then we move forward. Then we break those patterns and, and move forward. So I like to use that, that analogy similar to when we talked about your question of does therapy require you to re-experience the trauma? Same type of thing in doing adult child work is, you know, we we do it to the point of where we can identify where the pattern began and why. 
and then work on breaking that pattern in order to move forward. Can you please talk about your counseling and coaching services for single women? Yes. So, um, so as I was mentioning before about um, working with women, I specifically have a niche of working with single women who have gotten out of unhealthy relationships and really want to prioritize their self-care, maybe for the first time ever. You know, maybe they are used to going from relationship to relationship and just dating the same person, but just in a different body, the same person over and over. And that was really a big part of my story. I kept dating the same type of man who had had a lot of trauma, you know, um, because I had also had my own trauma. I really related. I really got stuck in that trauma bond as, as, as you know what that means. But for our audience, I'll define what a trauma bond is. And that's when two people bond over their shared trauma and almost feel uh, a dependency or an addiction to, to finding people that just have gone through a lot of things and who are, or suffered a lot of pain. And, and that was definitely me because I had you know, been through that in my cancer experience and dealt with a lot of physical pain and emotional pain. I was, I was attracted to other people, even friendships, friendships uh, and, and romantic relationships who had also been through a lot of pain because I wanted to heal their pain, but I didn't approach it in healthy ways. And um, so that's the difference in, you know, being a, being a helper in the helping field is that I've done a lot of my own work in, in that aspect. And uh, I, I, last year I decided to open up a coaching membership for women who, um, who are recovering from a toxic relationship. And we really focused a lot on health and wellness and setting boundaries and also healthy social connection. Uh, but it just didn't quite work out how, how I had hoped uh, because I don't think I had my vision quite right. It really was a beta test and I gave it about a year and I learned a lot of important lessons. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I learned some tweaks that I need to make. So I temporarily um, closed down the membership so I could revamp a couple of things and redesign some things. And so I am, hoping to open back that membership for single women this time. That's the difference is this time it is for single women who want to remain single for a time and they really want to focus on their relationships as far as making sure they know how to identify unhealthy boundary, uh, unhealthy behaviors. They can set good boundaries. They can take good care of their health and wellness. They, and they can prioritize themselves. And so that is the focus of this women's coaching membership. It is called Holistic Healing for Sensitive Singles. And it's also geared towards the highly sensitive or highly empathic woman like myself. And, you know, also really taking a look at some of those, some of those past patterns, like I mentioned earlier, and identifying. So it's a lot of education. It's, um, it's a coaching membership versus a counseling membership. And there are some differences there. Counseling is very much talking about the, the thoughts and the feelings, processing what that experience was like and talking about it. Coaching is very much taking action, getting um, education, getting resources, getting support and, and making goals, setting, you know, setting healthy, reasonable goals and having that accountability to take steps forward actually doing the work, so to speak. So um, so that's what the membership is. And I'll talk a little bit later about how people can um, find out more information about this membership. But I'm really excited to open it up to the highly empathic single woman who just really wants to focus on herself, uh, her self-care and prioritize self-love. You know, and again, sometimes maybe for the first time ever. Sounds great. And you'll provide that information later? Yes, I'll, I'll provide where people can look that up. Um, but just to also give a, a brief idea of what that looks like is it's all virtual. 
uh, because my practice is 100% virtual at this time, it's all over, you know, like a Zoom call. And every week we have a different event. So one, one week out of the month, we will have a guest speaker where a, guest, a different guest speaker will come and talk to us about different topics, whether it's health and wellness, mental health, relationships, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then another week we have what's called a coaching call where each person takes a turn and either asks questions or talks about an issue where they're struggling and, and are stuck and maybe need some help to move forward. So that's the coaching call. And then another week we do um, what I call neurosomatic practice. So neuro is brain, somatic is body. So we do practice on calming down the nervous system. So things like tapping, um, which I, I do uh, a lot on other videos on my YouTube channel, um, which is called EFT or emotional freedom technique. That's one of my favorite techniques to teach clients because it works quickly and it's effective and it's really simple. Um, so we, that's one, that's another week. And then the final week of the month, we just have a social event. So we just get together and do something fun over, over zoom. Like we have a watch party or, uh, we do maybe some karaoke. We play some games. We, um, come with a cup of coffee and we just chit chat lots of different things. Um, so that's kind of just to give people an idea of what the membership entails. But, um, but at the end, I'll give more details about where people can find that information. Okay, great. Okay, let's move on to the next one. What are some services that can help clients through the holidays that you offer? Yes. Um, well, like we talked about earlier, you know, the importance of maintaining sessions throughout the holidays um, because of just the, the the stress of family, the stress of maybe, you know, especially with people who aren't really good at setting boundaries, having that therapy session can help that person stay accountable. And even to practice, you know, even doing role plays, I've done that with clients is let's practice. Pretend I am whoever and tell me what you would say. And, you know, we go back and forth. Um, or just just that weekly check-in is so nice to have over the holidays. Like, are you taking care of yourself? Are you, are you, you know, are, are you getting way off track maybe with your food if that's an issue for people? Because I also do see clients that have issues with eating disorders or, or um, some kind of disordered eating habits. So that's also something that's really important to, to maintain over the holidays. Um, and, and just that, that accountability of, you know, checking in, making sure they're not overdoing it. They're not over committing themselves and, um, and they're just practicing good, healthy boundaries or, or just the basics, you know, are you, are you getting, are you drinking enough water? Are you getting, are you sleeping? Are you, you know, maintaining a good sleep schedule? Some of those basic health and wellness things. And, and it's amazing what, what that weekly check-in will do for, for someone. Because I will notice if someone, let's say, cancels their sessions over the month of December, but then they call the first week of January and, and they're just, they're, they're a mess because of just all of the stress from, the, from their family, the, the emotions, the trauma that's been triggered, the, the self-care has gone out the window, you know, and, and they're just overwhelmed. And, um, and sometimes it's just spent doing some nervous system regulation, which in layman's terms just means working, doing some simple techniques such as tapping, tapping different acupuncture points on the body, sending a calming message to the brain um, to come down from that fight or flight response. Sometimes that's what we spend our time doing is just, reg is just somatic body regulation work as well. So, um, yeah, so it's just so important, but it definitely is something that I, I notice every year that clients um, can easily put on the back burner because holidays are just so involved and busy. Clients can easily let, let their self-care slip. 
It sounds like you're offering a lot of important services throughout the holidays. And do you have any other thoughts you want to share? No, I think that about covers it. Other than it's just, other than it's just really important. And for me as well, I, you know, I have my own therapist. I have to keep it. I need to keep in touch with her. And when I miss a session, I, I feel it. I'm like, oh gosh, when is that session? <laughs> I can't come fast enough. Every Thursday at one o'clock, that's, that's my time, you know, with my therapist. And I, I look forward to it. What message would you like to share with the viewers today? So the final thought that I like to leave viewers with is self-care is so important and self-care is not selfish. I, I hear that a lot from clients that they equate self-care with being selfish and nothing could be farther from the truth. Self-care is essential. It's vital. You know, if we can't take care of ourselves, we can't show up for other people. And so that would be definitely the number one message is self-care is not selfish. It's, it's essential. I would love to make a t-shirt that says that. And, um, and to invest, to invest time, to invest your time in your self-care, to invest energy into your self-care and to invest money. Sometimes services that are necessary like mental health counseling or like health and wellness I won't get on my soapbox about uh, medical visits and, and holistic health care versus traditional health care because we'll be here forever. But, um, but basically, it's so important to invest money sometimes. Sometimes services won't be paid by insurance and we just have to make room for that. You know, we might not be able to get all of our needs met under this little umbrella of insurance is going to cover everything. Um, I've seen many people, and I used to be one of those people who would tune out, oh, nope, insurance is not going to cover that, then I can't do it, or it's not valid, it's not it's not good quality, and and that's also so far from the truth that I, I found through my health and wellness journey, is there are multiple practitioners that I see um, for my own health care. I have a team of people, of different practitioners in different areas of specialization, that aren't covered by insurance that I pay for out of pocket. And, and I have to be mindful of my finances so I can um, so I can account for that because it's so important to invest those three things, our time daily if possible. We, I always recommend to clients have something daily that you do for your self-care, whether that looks like five minutes here of tapping or a meditation or going for a walk in nature, or watching a funny TV show, or something, you know, doing something. Hopefully you can fit more than five minutes in there, but sometimes people only have five minutes, <laughs> you know, especially people with kids. I'm sure you can attest to that. And so that's, that's the message that I want to leave is to invest your time, your energy, and sometimes money and finances into your self-care, and that it is not selfish. It is an essential part of life. We have to prioritize ourselves and our health and our mental health. Yes, absolutely. Thank it's you. like that analogy of the the airplane crash is we have to put the the mask, the oxygen mask on ourselves first in order for us to protect our loved ones. You know, we have to show up for ourselves first or we're going to burn out. And um we're not going to, we're not going to feel good. We're going to, if we continue to not take care of ourselves in that way, we'll, we'll burn out and, and we could get resentful towards other people, towards ourselves. And it could cause just a lot of extra stress that could be avoided if we just maintain some kind of, um, you know, even if it's just a very baseline self-care routine, you know, and it's a work in progress too. That's that's another message that it, that I have. It's a work in progress because I definitely wasn't good at it in the beginning. I was horrible at it. I would stop and eat gas station food or stop at McDonald's on my way to something, and I would eat it in the car. And you know, I was always late for work in the morning because I overslept because my sleep schedule was horrible and just all of these things. And 
I relied too much on medications instead of lifestyle changes. That's, uh, I guess that's another message I want to leave clients with is um, not to rely too much on Western medicine and traditional pharmaceuticals is yes, there's a time and a place for pharmaceuticals. Absolutely. But there's also a time and a place for changing your lifestyle and working on your habits and, and having healthier habits. And that's a work in progress. And that's where, that's where we come in. You know, that's where we come in as a cheerleader an encourager, a coach to people that are just trying to make those lifestyle changes. And how can people find your services? So um, the best way that people can find my services are through my website, which is leahpetrucci.com. Um, through this website, there's lots of ways that people can, uh, that my phone number's on there, my email address, there's a link on there to schedule a free 30 minute consultation if people have questions or um, just aren't sure, like, you know, want more information about my services. And, and if I'm not the best fit, I will take that time and help them find someone who is. So it's never a waste of time for somebody to, um, to make that appointment. You know, I, I always want someone leaving with some kind of next step, whether it's, yes, you're, we're a good fit, let's work together. Or, you know what, I think this person over here might be a better fit for you. Let me give you their information. Um, so my website is probably the best way. And then my YouTube channel, this, this channel here, um, which is called Holistic Healing Network. I every week upload new educational videos and uh, a lot of um, somatic practice. People can go and, and watch um, a lot of education that they can get on the different things that I talk about and the different specializations that I have. That's a really great way for people to just kind of get to know the work that I do and um, see if I might be a good fit or just to, if not, just to learn some things, you know, just to have that as a, as an ongoing educational resource library for people. And it's absolutely free, you know, to, to watch videos on, on the YouTube channel. And an, another way they can keep in touch with me is to get on my email list um, and to receive a free copy of my relationship red flags checklist, which I put there on the screen, the link, you can, you can also just go to my website and on the homepage, you will see um, a place to click on that. So either one you can go to my webpage or you can go to this specific link there on the screen. And so that gets them a free copy of the relationship red flags checklist which is a PDF that I created to help people identify those red flags that I was talking about earlier, both in early dating and as well as later stages in the relationship. And then it also um, puts you on my email list where you get my monthly newsletter. And that's a way for people to just get updates about what, a, what video I came out with that week what project I might be working on, a little bit more updates about the coaching membership for single women that I talked about. And I also like to just share free health and wellness tips and education and, you know, give my suggestions about some of my favorite health and wellness tools that I like to use. So all kinds of goodies that, that people can get if they get on my email list. Great. And can you tell me if someone wanted to find your YouTube channel, they would find it on the newsletter and on your website? Yes. Um, if they go to my website, there's a little icon at the top that's a YouTube icon. They can click on it and it should take them right to my YouTube channel. Or they can just go to youtube.com and look up the name of my channel, which is Holistic Healing Network. Yes, I've, I've at the time we're filming this, I've hit my first hundred subscribers. And that was my first goal when I started the YouTube channel. I, I've been working on the channel for about two years, but it took me a while to get going and get consistent with it. But I have I have hit my first hundred subscribers. So I'm really I'm really proud of that accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Well, that is about it for our questions. Um, but I just want to thank you so much, Sarah, for 
joining me today in, in this podcast and just giving people some, some more information about how they can get help over the holidays, not just over the holidays, really, but any time, but um, holidays being so important. So I thank you so much for being my guest. And um, who knows, maybe we can do a follow-up podcast down the line. It'd be great. And thank you so much for having me today. All righty. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode.